Welcome to Zen and the Art of Social Media with your host, Trevor W. Goodchild, Facebook alum turned startup CEO. If you're an enterprising entrepreneur who's looking to start a business that makes a difference, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me, the host, Trevor W. Goodchild of Zen and the Art of Social Media. We have a lot of cool stuff on this podcast we cover, startup life, startup news, breaking developments. If you haven't had a chance to, go ahead and go over to my blog, jetskishaman.com for business tips and business news and cool stuff in that arena. Also, if you're in a situation where Facebook has disapproved your ad or disabled your ad account and will not tell you why, trust in Trevor. I worked at Facebook and ads and tech, and I can help you decode why your ad was disapproved and how to get compliant for Facebook. Send me an email. My email is trevor at trevorwgoodchild.com, and I'll be glad to help you out. Today, we are guested by Devin Brown. Devin is an amazing guy. He does amazing work in his community. We met in my amazing room, not to use the word amazing too many amazing times, but uh, entrepreneurs that make a difference. As you may have heard for the past few podcasts, we're drawing together quite a collective of impactful individuals, and Devin is one of these. Devin, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Trevor, man, it's such a pleasure, my brother. It's so good having you here. I'm in sunny Miami. Uh, so yeah, thank you for, for having me here. Uh, it, it's a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to connect and synergize with you, man. Yeah, it, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. And we have sunny weather right now in Austin, Texas, though it's been raining quite heavily for the past few days. But we mm-hmm. have sunny here. And I want to go ahead and dive in and talk about the work that you've done, your superhero <laughs> origin story, kind of what you got started on this path, what led you yeah. to do this and where you're at so from what i remember you have a lot of really amazing resources for kids yeah 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 so sports connect we we mentor at-risk youth through sports science and mental health awareness uh 65 of our youth are in indoor and outdoor suspension so we provide positive activities uh, for youth through adults and mentorship and basically it's employment, uh, employment skill building. And it's basically, we, we allow kids to have a safe space to be their best selves. So we are in uh, library sites um, in Miami and also in, in school sites. Uh, and we're also in, in plans of working on a clinic uh, to work with our kids. So we really are like developing like a whole child. And we're really being a, a safe space for kids that can enjoy um, the positive youth development for kids to really grow and really kind of attain like these 21st century skills that they kind of need to be successful in life and to be really, really great. Um, so it's been, it's a robust program and it's, it, it's been phenomenal, man. It's been, it's been such a great ride. It's been really good. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and as you were hearing in my room today, entrepreneurs that make a difference for another guy who is doing some cool stuff with his community in Canada we're, we're definitely very much aware that when yeah. kids, especially those that may come from at-risk environments or are in below, at or below the poverty line, like how I grew up, it's important to give them constructive activities to do because if they're not idle hands of the devil's workshop, as the saying goes, yeah. you know, when they're on the streets, they're hanging out on the corners, they meet other people yeah. that may not be as positive of a role model or influence on their behavior. Yeah. And so yeah. this is kind of where I think a lot of people at large may not see the value in having community activities. They don't necessarily always make that connection that it does reduce crime, especially in those one-time decisions where in a flash in the pan, one choice can doom the, the life uh, in someone's entire life by a decision yes. they made high on testosterone or estrogen yeah or whatever, or drugs. And yeah. then now their whole life has to be determined by a choice they made as a teenager. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so true. It's, it's idle. You're so right. Idle minds are dangerous minds. And all kids really need now these days is just something to do, you know, something to keep them busy. And it's so, and so what we try to do and allow them is really just to have these activities where they could feel engaged, they could feel busy and, and, and do these type of things. 
And you're so you're so right, you know, with the mental health and everything right now uh, with kids, especially due to the pandemic. Man, it's Trevor is crazy. We work with a, a children's hospital uh, here in Miami Children's Nichols Hospital, and they're saying they have 300 kids that are that are waited list are on their wait list uh, to get mental health services. Wow. So we have a huge, huge crisis um, due yeah. to the pandemic on kids being isolated um, with their mental health. So really leaning in in these times on giving them those peer mentors, those mentors that had lived experience like you, you know, are so beneficial and amazing to kind of have in their life uh, to kind of share those experiences. Say, hey, I know where you're at. I know where you're going. You know, it's going to be OK. You know, I can help you. I feel stress and and these type of type of things right now. And I can help you with that. So. The, it, it's so important. You're so right. It, it's just being there for the kids right now with their mental health and really give them these positive youth development kind of activities so they don't be idle. So they, they don't say like, you know, I'm bored. Let me go ahead and, you know, try to break into a car or I'm bored and, and try to um, do these kind of unnecessary things. So it's keeping them busy and really having these kids in our most underserved communities have that positive youth development to do these great things. And it's, it's going to take a village. It's going to take all of us. And it's so amazing, you know, on your room and what you're doing. It's, we're really creating a village and a, and a village is a community of people coming together to make things happen. Definitely. Well, I mean, think about the stats on this, right? I, I mean, I went to adult jail when I was 16 um, I was jumped by people in my homeless shelter I was staying in and I got sent to jail for assault and I was 16 years old. I'm in the cell with rapists, with murderers, uh, people that were doing B&Es and, and bank robberies and worse. And I'm 16 and I'm in a cell with adults in downtown jail for Austin. You know, yeah. my path could have split off into a lot of different directions and it did for a while. But yeah. you got to think about it, dial it back even. What about. What about a, a kid in high school who decides mm -hmm. do a little shoplifting at the mall? Still a yeah. little this, little that. Maybe yeah. maybe their parents yeah. aren't welfare. Maybe they're not. You know, doesn't either way. They made this choice because they're bored. They want something to do, and yes. so they shop. They shoplift a pair hundred dollar Nikes or something like yes. that. And yes. it seems like no big deal, but then they get <laughs> caught before they leave the mall or the store yes. wherever yes. they're at, and now they're in juvie. Right. Yeah. And now they're in juvie. And now who do they meet there? They meet other yeah. people. They meet other yeah. kids there. Often kids who, who have a, a lifetime of doing stuff like this intentionally, not on yes. a random whim, but because they've already been on this track. And yes. now that they're, they're going to introduce even more serious crimes. Say, hey, hey, when we get out, let's do this. When we get out, yeah. let's do that. Right. Yes. And they have to form these communities inside, whether they're in jail yes. or juvie to survive often. Yes. Because you can't be solo in some of these environments when it is that bad off. But the problem is, is, is they, they form the wrong type of associations. So now what was shoplifting 90 days later that on the streets again, they got new contacts, new friends. Now they want to go and they want to take a woman's purse or maybe they want to do a stick up for a gas station, you know, with a right. toy gun or, or a right. real one. Right. right. So like, right people don't see how how it snowballs so fast yes why it's so important yes. to keep kids from just being on the streets yes yeah yeah trevor you hit it right on the head brother it, it's it's so important and you also see this a lot of with a lot of foster youth is that they get in trouble and they have these things due to their mental health they have the anger and the buildup on being in these environments uh they lash out and they have they get these kind of uh, things on their record where they live they live on forever. So it's even harder for them to find employment in different things, and it, and it sets them back. And since they can't get employment, those things like that, they go back and they revert to different type of crime. And you know, and just like you're saying, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. You know, so if you're continuing to do these things. And you're doing these other type of crimes and other things like that. You're surrounding yourself with a group that, you know, just doesn't know better. They just, they don't have that guidance and that mentorship. And they get caught up in just like you were saying, just that snowball effect is, is, is everything, you know? Biggest so stat for criminals, yeah. biggest stat for criminals, yeah. no yes. father figures, no father yes. figures, 
biggest yes thing. yes L- let me tell you trevor man the reason how i really got into this work is you know i was here in miami and i was doing a lot of therapeutic mentorship and in the community that i work in is is uh it's called overtown it's a historically black neighborhood and just to give you a context of the kind of environment of, of that we're in is that uh, there was a mom that couldn't even have furniture in the house uh, because they didn't want the drug dealers and all the gang members to be around. And she would always leave lawn chairs uh, for me and and uh, my youth that I used to go see. And we and I used to time them. You know, he used to run from school, and I used to time them to see if we would get there on time. I'm like, okay, good job, baby. You got there. You got here on time. And we we're just out in the community, and we were asking him. You know, what's the biggest issue going on? What are the things that's going on? He's like, Devin, the reason why me and my a lot of my friends are in gangs is because we don't have father figures. We don't have father figures. And that's why we all band together, because we kind of get that energy and all that from not having a father. We get that from being with each other. And when I saw that, Trevor, man, I was like, as me, as, as being a black man, being a black man, wanting to be a role model out here, that was my call to action to kind of do Sports Connect. I said, I can't turn back. I see your yeah. need and, and I can't turn around. I got to do something about it. And that's really what made me want to start the work to do what I do. And that's awesome. And so it's called Sports Connect. And you've been operational since 2011. You started really scaling in 2018. And yeah. you have seven sites right now in Miami. Yes, yes. Seven, seven sites in Miami right now, uh, in Dade, uh, looking to expand into Broward County and also West Palm Beach. Uh, we really are big into the region. Um, we're, uh, you know, you have science and mental health activities. Mm-hmm. Talk yes. About, talk about some of the activities that the kids are doing. Yeah. So it's really cool. So I have a secret weapon, which is my mother. Uh, she's a retired <laughs> uh, school teacher of 40 years. Uh, she's retired now, so she's 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 with me. She's kind of I kind of volunteered, told told her to kind of do a lot of stuff with our organization. So she gets on, she gets with the class and helps the kids do robotics and science activities nice. and, and build the robotics teams in in their schools and help them compete with other uh, kind of schools doing robotics. As kind of robotics is like one of the biggest and and greatest kind of educational sport. The, that kids are really getting engaged in doing it and having underserved kids kind of learn these kind of robotics and these 21st sentence, 21st century knowledge based skills uh, that they're learning and doing and also having them understand about science and learning about th- those type of things. Um, it's those it's really kind of the future, the knowledge knowledge based economy economy um and also on the mental health side we have a great organization um that's called sports connect youth move um, that we connect with youth move which is a national program um that works with mental health and substance abuse kids and it's and it's mental health awareness month so um yeah. it's it's so great that we're on this topic and talking to your community or network about mental health and, and kids mental health and having uh, youth at the table um, Are there any that, wins you want to share from some youth that you personally have worked with or that your organization have worked with that maybe they started from here and then they yeah. got to there uh, yeah. with you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's there's a youth that I used to see um, that was really, uh, you know, really behavioral, you know, and uh, in a really tough uh, situation. He was held back multiple times. Uh, he was, uh, you know, really behavioral that he couldn't even be in parks um, because he was, uh, you know, deemed kind of really dangerous around that time. And being in our program, he's like really connected with a lot of mentors. And he's learned that, you know, it, I can really be something, you know, I can really uh, be somebody and do great things. And now he's, you know, he's getting A's and B's. He's nice. not getting in trouble awesome. anymore. Um, you know, he's really uh, seen his potential and, and on what he could do. And it was really just somebody being there with him and just somebody just listening to him and, and guiding with him and really building rapport with the kids. And, and Trevor, what I've seen is building rapport uh, with our kids is everything. 
You know, you have to be able to connect where you, before you can correct. Um, so so we connect been, before you can correct. That's yes. A great. It's a great thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so we really have been trying to build that rapport with them. And once we've been able to build that rapport with them, they've been really been able to turn the corner, but that's, that's one of our youth that was in a really tough situation, tough buying when we first had him, uh, but he's been able to really turn the corner and use his energy, you know, towards a really positive way. And uh, yeah, I'm super, super proud of him. And, 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 I, and I call them, I call them all my kids, you know, so I, I, I love them. They're all like my, my children that, that, you know, I make sure are good and, and, and watch out for. So, yeah. What would you say is a good tip for someone that is trying to build rapport with the troubled youth? What would you say are kind of some top, top five tips that you would have for someone that wants to reach out to a youth? And, and as you know, and as anyone who has worked with kids or has kids knows, especially in this era, right? Once they get a cell phone, they or smartphone, they think they're an adult. They, they're not going to listen to anybody. They know more than you. They can Google stuff, right? right. They get validation right. on social media. Right. Other people will agree with them what they have to say, right. if their ideas are backwards or ill-informed or dangerous, <laughs> right? Oh, well, right. I got a chorus of yes men, other other 14 year olds that hate their parents or whatever the, the you know, whatever the scenario is. So, so like it, there's extra barriers, I think, even more than any other time because right. there's these little bubbles that kids can hide and duck into and then never, or they're addicted to games and they're on video games, first person shooter all the time, yes. Halo, yes. whatever, you know, like those games with black ops and, and they're yep. just stuck on it. So what yep. would you say is some advice for, for, for someone that is in the community or trying to reach out and build rapport yeah. with these yeah. kids? Man, is that such a good question? I would say those first couple of moments, those first couple of sessions, um, I think sometimes, especially in the mental health space, we can get very clinically, like, let's make sure we do our clinical kind of stuff, but it's really just understanding what they like, you know? So if they like, it was some of the best kids that I've been able to build rapport with. Some of them were great athletes. They love football. They love sports. Um, they love music, you know? So really find is like oh, okay so you, you like that new migo song okay I, I like that too or i like that that new hip-hop artist um i you know so you, this is your favorite team okay do you like the nfl what do you think about you know what do you what do you think about the, the texas what do you think about you know um the, the you know the team the college teams that are going on so it's really seeing what they like and those interests um, and then really start to like build rapport and have just informal, natural conversation with them at first. And then as you go, you know, along, then you'll start to see that they really start to open up with you. They start to be co comfortable with you. And then I say the second kind of tip is being consistent. Being consistent with kids is so important because especially a lot of kids in our community, a lot of people are in and out of their lives and not consistent. So if you're consistent, you keep showing up, you show them that you're going to be there for them. Not only do you win the kids over, but you win the parents over. And when, they, and when you win the parents over, it's everything. It's a great point. It's everything. It's everything, you know? So it's really being consistent for them. And once you see that the parents are like, okay, this person is here. They really care about my child. You know, that's, that's everything. I'm really, I'm really going to be receptive and listening. To, to what they kind of say. And the kids will be really more receptive to what you say. Um, but you really have to kind of lay that foundation of really finding out what they're interested in and really being consistent and really being authentic because the kids can really feel if you're being real or not. They're really good on it. So it's just being like you're really genuinely being with them. I'm really genuinely interested in you and i'm really genuine seeing you succeed and be great is important is everything so i i would say is really building rapport finding what they're interested in learning about the music learning about the sports they like or the things that they're interested in too and really connect with them and build rapport that way and really be consistent really be consistent be a be a if you know be a man of your word or a woman of your word. You know if you say you're gonna be there, be there. You know because for them that's everything for them. 
That's everything for them. A lot of the kids have been uh, heard that and people haven't been able to follow through and be consistent. But once you're consistent and you keep showing up, they're like, okay, he's here. And then, and then especially the, the, the parents are like, okay, he's here. And, and, and it builds that trust. Yes. It builds that trust and rapport. Um, so I, I would say those are like those really kind of main tips um, and be authentic be real, you know, be, be, they could feel if you're there that you just have to be there or they could feel that you're really there for them, that you really care and you really want to make an impact in their, in their kid's life. They can feel that the the kids and not, and not only the kids, but the families can really feel that. And if you can, if you, they can really feel that authentically, then they'll be like, okay, yeah, we can, we can let, we can, really open up and really um let them know about what's going on that sounds incredible and it sounds like you've done some amazing work and i think the the other part of the perception that is missing i think in a lot of folks when they maybe give a just a a casual glance towards community programs with kids isn't just the fact that you may be helping one child not live a life of being in and out of prison or dying early, but it's also the ripple effects of every person that young man or woman comes into contact with throughout the (laughs) remainder of their lives and the positive changes they'll be able to inspire (laughs) in their communities as they grow up to be a teenager in their early twenties and thirties and and so on is being able to see, well, this isn't just a difference in the local community or just this child's life but all the different spheres because they can move to different countries, different states yeah. and cities, everywhere they go, that goodness that you helped grow inside them will continue yes. to influence and, and spread the light. Yes. It, it, it's so amazing, Trevor. And it, it just always like comes back full circle. You know, it's when those kids make those impact and they do those things in the community, uh, they like, they always tend to come back, you know, to come back and say, Hey, how can I help? somebody that was in my situation pull up. How can I, because I know how impactful this program was to me. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't have it, you know, like I don't know where I would be at. So let me pay it forward, you That's know? Awesome. And, and, and they're like, so let me, let me, you know, talk to a kid and give him some game. Let me, let me talk to a kid for a little bit and, and inspire and motivate them. Uh, and, and, and it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing when you have the kids come back. You know, and they say, hey, Devin, how can I help? That's awesome. So what are you looking forward to going on in 2021? What's next? What's next for your yeah. organization? What are you looking forward yeah. to? Yeah, man, Trevor, it's we're so excited about, you know, what we're doing in, in our scaling. We are thinking of how do we take the organization nationally and global, you know, and going in that direction. You know, so we are thinking, so we're thinking about projects uh, be in the Detroit area. Uh, we're very passionate about Detroit. Um, there's a lot of things that have been going on over there. Um, a lot of schools have been closing. A lot of community centers haven't been there. Um, so we're really thinking about um, possibly adding the Sports Connect model and duplicating that into the Detroit area uh, and having more positive youth development over there. Uh, for our kids that are over there in Detroit. Um, We're also looking at the Dominican Republic um, to possibly um, infuse a lot of our programs into the, into the Dominican Republic. Um, What we've been seeing. Yeah. With Kelly, yeah. With Kelly was just in a room. Yeah. So yeah, I think that'd be an awesome synergy uh, to kind of maybe do a, a fun collaboration uh, together and and I think too, Trevor. What's so cool and so great about what you're doing too is that it's so great because we're building a community of bakers. You know, it's like not being an eater. And if we collaborate with each other, we're making a really good pie. We're making a really good pie yeah. that we can ease. Like, look, you're doing something great. I'm doing so great. Let's get together and let's bake this amazing cake. And I'll eat off. You know. Food. Yeah. We can we can all eat off it. We yeah. can all eat on it. I think that's so amazing. Instead of us having a scarcity mindset, 
Right. Where it's like, oh, you know, let me, let me like keep my last piece of pie. And we're still <laughs> fighting for the same piece of pie, you know. Yeah. Let's be great bakers together, and let's make these great cakes and, and it's and it's bake, you know, and make and have these cool projects and do these great things. And so, yeah, I just I just want to give a cool kudos to you on that because you're really sure. setting the community on that, and and that's so amazing. I gotta I gotta give you your flowers while you're here, man. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. So, so for those that don't know, this is something on Clubhouse. Uh, he's not going to send me actual flowers. I don't usually <laughs> get those or need those, but it's it's a uh, way of giving props on the social media app Clubhouse. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> work, work hard and stay humble, right? You said that's that it. I like that. That's it. So, yeah, the movement that I'm working on with entrepreneurs that make a difference is going to be global. We're just barely yeah. getting started. So yeah. it's going to be amazing. And you're part of it. Yeah. And so yes. thanks for, for being part of it. At where can people go to find out more information on Sports Connect? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you can check us out on our Sports Connect Instagram page. Instagram sports, page please. That's sports Connect with a K as a yes. koala. As koala, yes. A K as a koala, now to see. Sports Connect with a K. Check us on our Instagram page. Follow us. Uh, you can see all the stuff that we're doing with our kids. You um, website you want to shout out? Yes, www.sportsconnect.org. You can check us out uh, on our programs and things that we're doing over there. Um, you can hit us up on our Instagram page. Uh, you can follow me on my Instagram page on brown.devin. Uh, it's all kind of lowercase, so brown uh, with the E at the end, dot .devin. Uh, you can follow me on my Instagram page um, and all that and, and reach out to see what we could do and synergize. But um, yes, it, it's amazing what we're doing. Um, and, and Trevor, I, I just, I'd appreciate you, my brother. It's so, it's so amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing on what's going on in our synergy and, 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 and the village that we're building, you yeah. know, the, tribe. the community we're building and the yeah. tribe that we're building. Yeah. It's 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 basically just getting folks together that really care about the world and they're they have different positions, whether they're an SMB or they are a billionaire and they're in different industries of whether that's tech, marketing, you know, mm -hmm. sports, wherever. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that we share a care for this world, yes. getting better yes. and not being spectators, but but taking yes. action, taking action, stepping yes. out, being leaders yes. in the community. And gathering people together, making those six degrees of separation connected so that we're all able to connect with each other, help our friends, our partners, and community leaders connect with the resources they need and the people they need to talk to to make that bigger impact. So thank you for being on the podcast today. And I want to thank everyone else for listening in. Please go ahead and visit sportsconnect.org. That's S-P-O-R-T-S-K-O-N-N-E-C-T dot O-R-G. And check out Devin's work. It's incredible uh, what he's doing. And, uh, you know, thanks for joining us for another episode of Zen and the Art of Social Media. Thanks, Devin. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.